Right. We're going to uh, do some journaling, we're going to ask some questions, and then we'll do a little exercise. I did take away this part of questions that I kind of want to just, you guys ask today, and I just want to give you like my perspective of that. So, um, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about holistic methods to healing, all right? Um, somebody said that they did yoga, right? Somebody's tried yoga? I've tried it. Okay. What kind of yoga did you try? Do you know what? No? no was it at like at the VA or was no, it like at a it yoga studio? Gym, my okay. Up okay, gotcha. Goat yoga? <laughs> a little goat yoga? <laughs> yeah. No no goat yoga? I used to do Irish yoga. Yeah? Back in the day? <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah. You do Tai Chi. Yeah, I do Tai Chi. Okay, that's. That's, well, yeah, it's an Asian, different kind of method, but it's still a breath to movement. So um, I'm going to give you a little brief overview of some holistic methods to healing this evening. And then tomorrow I'm going to dive more in depth of mindfulness and meditation and just give you more specific of what that is. Does anybody in here have an idea of what mindfulness is or what meditation is or what that means? Think and control your emotions? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of it. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my, go ahead. Being completely present in the now. Being present now. That's exactly it. There's um, a method to that, and there's a whole kind of theory behind that approach. But mindful is, mindfulness is definitely the first one, and that is being present in the moment, right? It's not really fa focusing on the future, the past. It's not comparing yourself to who you are today to the past or who you might be tomorrow are comparing yourself to anybody else in here. So I want to make sure that, you know, at, at this point right now, just for the next few minutes, I just want you to just kind of release any labels that you've given yourself. All right? I just want you to allow yourself to be raw and authentic and vulnerable. Just for the next few minutes. All right? Just let all of that go. The second one is meditation, and we're going to dive deep in that. Uh, after this, we're going to spend an hour in a guided meditation that's called a Yoga Nidra. And it's probably something that you've never experienced before if you haven't done yoga. You just get to lay there for an hour and relax and listen to my voice and some calming music. What was the yoga? What? Nidra. I N N I D R A. What is that before? I'm not going to say that. I D R A. Yoga, Nidra, and mm -hmm. And later on here in a minute, I'm going to go through a variety of different types of yoga that I will suggest and types of just overall general meditation as well. Another one that I really enjoy every week is acupuncture. I get acupuncture and then get a myofascia release. It's kind of like a massage, but she really just works on my tendons, joints, and fascia. So acupuncture is one method. If you haven't tried it, I would definitely highly suggest acupuncture. That, the night that I get acupuncture and that massage combination, she also does like the cupping, you know what that is, where they put the suction cups on you and all that is the best night of sleep I get the entire week, by far. Where's the suction cup thing? It just helps pull out like all the, I'm not gonna say toxins, but it's gonna just help pull and release the muscles and the fascia and the tendons, it's just gonna help them just relax a little bit more. So it's applying pressure in a positive manner. Yeah, I was gonna say, as opposed to the massage, which is down, it's pulling it up. Because I started with that myofascial release, yep. tissue stuff in and how's January. That, and how's that working for you? Yeah. See? Yeah. So if you can find somebody on that approach, acupuncture and possibly myofascial release at the same time, it's amazing because like she'll put needles in my back and then she'll start rubbing on my legs and then she'll put cups on my leg, pull the needles out of my back, start rubbing on my back, then she flips me over and does all this stuff the whole time. So VA pays for it. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is a sauna. Sauna is really healthy. There's been some clinical trials out there that talk about all the benefits of sauna. It's just like a physical activity that you do really well. And, and, and I, don't, I can maybe find the YouTube if you guys are interested in it and, and let you know that link. But what is it? sauna. Like, like one in a sauna? Yes, sir. Yeah. I it's really, really good for your heart. Uh, but there is a time frame that you have to be on there depending on if it's a wet or dry sauna and the temperature. So there's a lot of factors to that in order to be benefit. So like say it's a, 
160 degree sauna, you can be in there like 20 minutes. If it's 130 degrees, you need to be in there like 45 minutes. So there's a length that actually makes it beneficial for you, but it actually like does lowers your, your um, heart disease and all these other things. I don't remember everything on the video, but it, it is an amazing opportunity for healthcare. The next one is a hot tub. If you have access to a hot tub, a lot of times that's going to help relax the muscles and calm you, you know, just kind of get you chilled out. And then, I don't know if you guys are familiar with float tanks. I can't do it because I'm extremely claustrophobic, but they have float tanks that are actually like the size of that section over there. And they have like 15,000 gallons of like... Is that that deprivation, sensory deprivation? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, so they have small ones, but they actually have big ones that are like that whole kind of section right there that you can get into and it's just, it's nice and quiet. You're actually floating on the water because it has so much salt in it. So those are really a great opportunity too if you're not claustrophobic. I can't do it because I'm just, I'm going to freak out if you put me in that closed room, All right? Um, so the other one is different kind of, but a massage is a really, really good opportunity just for some holistic health care. And my favorite is just getting out in nature. Hiking, camping, back, you know, taking the van and just getting out, right? So I'm just gonna ask real quick, real quick, um, if you can think of like one of the favorite vacations or holidays or times that you've spent, was it in nature? Was it away from like the city and just out and quiet. Is there a show of hands anybody that that was their best? Okay, most of guys. What was y'all's favorite time? Your favorite holiday, the favorite, favorite thing you did away? Antigua. Yeah, what's that? It's an island in the West Indies. Okay, so it's nature? nature. Yeah, but yeah, it's a resort. Right. And then what about you? I, I like it, uh, location, so it's nature. Okay, and you? Okay, in Florida? Yeah. yeah. I know where that is, I've been there, yeah. So, a lot of times in our life we, we realize, okay, this is when I was really the happiest, but I want you to start thinking about why that made you really happy. And a lot of times it's because of the, the toxic, toxicity of our everyday life, of where we live right now, of the city, of the people, or the places, or those things like that, and that gives us an opportunity. So, I, uh, I moved to Colorado, well I moved in my, I sold my house last May, I don't know if all this is right, I left in July and lived in the van for six months and then I bought a house at the very end of November, like November 28th last year in Colorado. But it wasn't an intent to buy another house, it was just, you know, we listened to the doctor. The, the doctor told me that I needed to move someplace out of Kansas in the Midwest to where the barometric pressure was more level. I have fibromyalgia, I have a lot of stuff, sleep apnea, I got a whole list. And when I left in July 13th and I went up, we drove from here, we went all the way up to Whistler, Canada and back and when I got back, I did not feel good at all. I was here for about a week and then I went up to Trimblick, Canada, came back and then after that I was like almost bedridden for an entire week. I couldn't get out, I was in so much pain. And so I realized, I finally really need to listen to this doctor at the VA and I need to relocate. So we went up and went to California Colorado and um, I started studying the barometric pressure. There was things that I was looking for. I, I have a pit bull so there can't be any bans on dogs. I need to be close to an international her airport for my wife and I need to be close to a VA hospital. So I needed a place that kind of fit all of that criteria so we started looking and we ended up in Evergreen, Colorado which fits all the boxes of everything that we're looking for. So it's about an hour in the Rocky Mountain from Denver. So if you go to Denver, get right into the Rocky Mountains, we're like the about first. About 70? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so before you get to like, Estes before, before you go to it's what? south of Estes, and it's before all that. So it's going to be the first major city, well, not major, but incorporation before you get to like Breckenridge and Vail and all that. That's not golden, isn't it? In a sense, that's north, okay. but it's close. Yeah, so there's like Denver, then there's uh, Golden, Boulder, and then Fort Collins. I'm more like east or west of all of that. So you just take 70 west, get into the Rocky Mountains. So he, where are you, Littleton, Darren? So it's, it's kind of almost directly 
west of Littleton and all that. So it fit all the boxes. So I know a lot of people don't have an opportunity to relocate and move, but what I'm going to say is a really great opportunity for a holistic method of healing and getting centered is maybe just a park or go camping or get yourself outdoors at some point so you can just let go. Nature really has all the benefits, right? It's kind of like gratitude. Gratitude in nature, there's really not a lot of side downsides to that. So think about this week of, of places that you can maybe go within your community if you don't have the ability to relocate to you know, your perfect place. And I tell people, I really had the opportunity to move anywhere I wanted in, in the world and I just chose Evergreen because it fit all the boxes for me right now for my health, my well-being and everything that we need, all right? So then I'm gonna get into yoga. And there's a variety of different types of yoga and I actually did a YouTube video on this about a week or two ago. Uh, there's guided meditation and there's a variety of different guided meditations. There's people here in Kansas City that go out here somewhere to Parkville and they do like a hike through one of these really cool trails and do like a guided meditation. Um, there's people that sit down in a yoga studio and do guided meditations. There's studios in the east and west coast that do guided meditations inside the studio for 15 and 30 and 45 minutes. So if you're on your lunch break or you're going home from work and you just need a really short meditation, you can do it just for that time as well. Yoga Nidra, you'll experience this evening, is the other one. And then there's Hatha, um, which is you're doing somewhat of a flow. You're going to hold standing postures usually from 30 to 60 seconds. So uh, like a Warrior 1 or Warrior 2 or exciting. Or you're going to hold and what that does is allow a lot of strength and a lot of endurance. If you have like fibromyalgia or chronic pain or fatigue, I'm going to suggest you don't do that because all it's going to do is cause a lot of irritation and frustration because it's difficult to hold those postures for that time. There's um, also like a yin deep stretch and that's what we'll do in the morning. Every morning we'll go through and do a yin deep stretch. And that really opens up the muscle, fascia, joints, ligaments. It really gives you an opportunity just to release and grow unlike anything else. Uh, the other one is a vinyasa, which is breath to movement. And so there's, on my YouTube channel, there's actually a vinyasa class as well in a deep stretch if you're kind of just wanting to understand what those mean. Um, and then there's heated vinyasa, which is like the power yoga, like the corporate yoga places you see, they do a lot of heated yoga. And so then there's, um, I, I put in here four categories for methods of meditation. So you could say like a, a mantra or an intention. So an intention is kind of like, like a good deed or a good thought or good feelings that you want to have for today. And it could change throughout the day. So you could start off and say, today I want acceptance of, of who I am. Right? I want acceptance for those people in my life. I know somebody talked about irate drivers. I don't remember who that was, but... Right? Yeah. So that's a big one, right? I always say world peace starts with your turn signal. Just just start, just turn your, t use your turn signal and you can start world peace right here at home. Right? So, and I actually do a whole theme on that in yoga. I'm like, start with that. Just be respectful to those people in your community. It's just as simple as starting with your turn signal. Right? Looking them in the eye and giving them a little gratitude. You know? So it could be a mantra. Um, some people also can call those like a phrase, like so it could be, I am loved, right? I am strong. I am at peace. So it can be a, just a short little phrase that you tell yourself throughout the day, right? Or you could tell somebody else, right? So what I do is when that idiot pulls out in front of me, I just extend them, I love you. That's how I fight my anger and my road rage. Because if you're being really rude and inconsiderate and I just say, I love you and accept you for who you are and I do a little wave, it resets everything about me, right? And it, and it changes that conflict with that person, right? So think about how you approach those people and that all starts with your intention, right? And how you can approach other people. What was your intention for today? Be welcoming, right? To all you guys, just welcome you, love you, right? If you come into my house, that's, that's the thing is that I set for my house is that I want you to feel at home. Every single person that walks in my house and they tell me that they feel so at home and they feel so welcome and that's exactly the energy that I put out 
in my house. And I want you to feel that way. I want you to come in here and just be like, man, this place is peaceful. This place is serene, it's quiet. So phrase, little phrase or an intention, all right? And there's also guided apps. Mike, I know you have an app that you suggest. Do you remember, what is that called? You get Vision Pursuit, mm -hmm. we'll be here actually. Okay, so Vision Pursuit is one. There's apps if you have a smartphone that you can use. Site timers. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's right, Site Timer is one. Um, you can also look on YouTube and things like that. So if you, if you need a tool and you need a, just a different perspective, just reach out there and, and think and look and see. And usually ones like that have a higher rating or a lot more downloads. So you obviously know that they've done well. Other people are using them or just ask the community. I don't use apps myself. I just give myself that guided meditation. I'm going to tell you what I give you tonight and this entire week is what I've given myself through my entire yoga journey. And I know it's worked for me, and I know it's worked for however many other cohorts we've been through, and it works. And so I'm going to give you the tools that you can do this at home. I'm going to give you the same opportunity that you can grow and change and have all this at your resources at any time you need them. Um, there's a couple of guys that did the Rubicon Trail, got up to the top, and they pulled out their phone and did my Yoga Nidra once they got to the top of this. I don't even know how long that drive is, but I know it's crazy. So anytime that you have that, I want you to have accessibility to any of those tools, all right? So guided meditation apps, YouTube, and then an internal, so a breath. So um, let me come back to that real quick. I'm going to do the last one. Um, the other one is I'm going to say tools. So once again is like mala beads. So you have mala beads, and it's 108. There's a lot of symbolism for 108, but you could just take and tap each bead and say, you know, I'm accepted. I'm loved, I'm accepted, I'm loved, or whatever your mantra or phrase, just go through each one, and by the time you're done with 108, it should be more ingrained in your mind, and it's more of a habit. And then I'm gonna go back now to internal, your breath and your intention, and the reason your breath is extremely important, and we'll talk a lot about that, but um, somebody said today, and they said that they wanna be able to control their anger, right? I'm going to tell you right now, it starts with your breath, right? It starts with your breath, it goes to your beliefs, and then your behaviors. And we've all heard that, you know, anytime you get mad, you get upset, what do they want you to do? Stop and take a deep breath. Anytime you've had a panic attack or anytime you're anxious, everything in this life going this point forward truly starts with your very next breath. And it's just a slow, deep, methodical breath. And upstairs, we're going to go through that. I'm going to explain to you exactly how you should breathe. But I'm going to tell you, that is the biggest part of being mindful. That's the biggest part of meditation. That's the biggest part of being centered and grounded, is a slow, methodical breath. Um, there's a difference between Eastern and Western medicine, and I'll go through that a little bit tomorrow. But Eastern medicine is your life is dependent upon your breath. Western, it's dependent upon your heartbeat. And they use that analogy because if you think about the animals that hold their breath the longest, like sea turtle, they live a long time, right? The people that, the animals that have a little short breath, right? They don't live as long. So that's where that philosophy comes in is your breath. And it just gives you a whole completely different holistic view. So before I go into some of the topics that you guys kind of brought up today, do you guys have any questions about what we've discussed so far? None? Which animal has the shortest breath? Which, uh, I think like a chipmunk or something. Do you know? No. That's good. No, yeah, that may be it. It's probably, you know, I think somebody did say a bird one day, but I don't know. I'll have, well, Google that. That'll be the question of the day. All right. Um, and I talked about this earlier. I think it's very important that this week that we kind of remove labels, right, and how we define ourselves, and we kind of redefine who we are. And we'll go through a little exercise of that in a few minutes. So here's a question I want you to write down in your journal, and you don't have to answer this right now. All right? But I want you to think about how you can love and accept yourself. How can you love and accept yourself for who you are right here, right now? And what does that process look like? And then after you get to know me, you'll realize that I'm going to ask this question 
the second time, but how can we love and accept others? First of all, you realize you have to love and accept yourself. You can't love and accept others unless you truly love and accept yourself. So, so many times the relationship that we have with ourselves is a direct, re or with others, is a direct reflection of the relationship we have with ourselves. So a lot of times, if we're feeling guilt and shame, we project that onto other people, right? Um, when you get in a conflict, so like say Mike and I get in a huge fight and he starts yelling and screaming at me and I'm just going to ask him, do you love and accept me for who I am right here, right now? And that will diffuse that conflict and that will kind of re-interject, right? That's the best question that you can ask a lot of times. And then you can ask that about yourselves. When you lose your temper, are you loving and accepting yourself right here, right now? And then you can ask, am I loving and accepting that other person for who they are? And how can I get to that mode? How can I get to the mode that's taking me years instead of getting out of my car and kicking the person's ass that pulled out in front of me? I cannot tell you how many times I got out of my car. Tons. And they're getting on their phone, calling the police. And I'm like, call them. You're going to be, the shit's going to be beat out of you by the time the police get here. <laughs> right? That's how mad I would get. I'd get so angry. And then I was like, well, this is just dumb. Why am I projecting that energy on them? So it's taken years, but now it's like I wave and I just say, man, I love and accept you. I understand something is going on in your life, right? Maybe you just are a narcissist. Maybe this world revolves all around you. But no matter what, I'm still going to love you, right? So we've got to figure out a method to retrain and train our brain. And I'll discuss a lot of that as well. So... One thing that, that I want you to realize is, and I'll talk about this too, is your gifts and your talents are very unique to each and every one of you. And I want you to start thinking about your gifts and your talents this week. And each one of them are a little bit different. I, I truly believe my gift and talent is yoga, right? Because of all the positive feedback that I've realized. But I can do other stuff, they're just not as good. Like I can build a table, right? It's not like anything fancy, but it's okay, right? So I can do woodworking. I can do some arts and crafts and things like that. So I have other gifts and talents and other interests. But this week, I really want you to start thinking and dive deep. And once you can see inside yourself, then you can see your full potential. You can begin to see what you're capable of doing and using those gifts and talents for yourself and for your community as well. All right? And I can't remember why this was brought up, but it, I think there was somebody talking about enlightenment or uh, feeling entitled. And there's a big difference between feeling entitled. Instead, you should feel enlightened. You should be able to provide a guidance of wisdom and hope and joy to people and not feel like you deserve all of this, right? You know, just like humility, it's not thinking of yourself less, it's just thinking are not thinking less of yourself, but just thinking of yourself less and giving that opportunity to somebody else, all right? So through the mindfulness, through yoga, meditation, through all this breath work, through all these things, um, you really have to focus on that and work on it. It's not always easy at the beginning, but the more you do it, the more repetitive you get, the more better it is. So. Think about, I never played sports, but a professional athlete, right? They don't just show up like five minutes before the game, pull up to the parking lot and hop in and start throwing the ball or kicking the ball or whatever if it's football, right? They spend hours throughout their years and career focusing and crafting their gifts and their talents, right? So it's something that takes time, just like through this process. You know, I know we've said this before, but it's, you're going to feel a lot better on Friday. You're going to feel, tomorrow actually you're going to feel better. Wednesday you're going to feel amazing, I promise you that. There's a whole difference between today and Wednesday and then Thursday you guys are just like a unit, a team. You're so excited, you're full of love and acceptance. I can promise you that. You're going to feel so much different in four days than you do from now. I've seen it however many times we've been through this. Um, but realize that once you go back on Monday and Tuesday and then the following month, like you're not in the same environment. So you've got to do the due diligence. I can promise you, I'll tell you this when I do, when I host yoga teacher trainings, that the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. 
And I've noticed that with those people, same thing in this program. You know, it, this is your foundation this week, but you have to continue on when you're out of here and continue these concepts, right? So just realize that it's gonna take work. It may take a lot of work just figuring out what your gifts and talents are. If you have somebody that's close to you in your life, a significant other or a mentor or a friend or somebody that's known you for a while, I suggest having this conversation with them and saying, look, I really want to know what my gifts and talents, I really want to have an opportunity to connect or give back to the community or give back to my family or my friends. What is it you feel like my gifts and talents are? What do you feel like my assets are? And have that conversation with them and then they're going to help lead and guide you in that direction and then you can just kind of go from there. So, I've heard a lot of people say today that they don't care and I want you to understand that being non-judgmental is different than non-caring. And I think a lot of times we say that, oh, I don't care, I don't care. But really what you're saying is, I'm not judging you. You are caring. You care about the people in your community. You care about yourself. But realistically, we just need to kind of rephrase that and say, I don't judge you. You know, I care about you as a person, but I'm not judging or criticizing what you do with your time or your behavior or things like that. I'm loving and accepting you for who you are. So there is just a little bit of a difference in there. And then I want you to write this down in your journal and think about this this week as well. What are you doing to avoid connecting with yourself and others? What are you doing to avoid connecting with yourself and others? Are you working 40, 60 hours a week? Are you watching Netflix? Are you binge watching the Netflix and Hulu? All right? Are you avoiding tough conversations with yourself and others? So begin to think about that and process that of really why you're avoiding those conversations and those activities and what's causing you not to connect with those <coughs> others.